Welcome, I'm the dentist. In our dent agenda, we will be continuing the first chapter, History Taking and Examination, Part 2. These are the points included in this chapter video series. And here is the detailed content. Second point, examination. Starting with medical examination. It is simply a brief screening for any potential problems. The exception are the patients who are undergoing general anesthesia or any other positive medical history patients undergoing extensive treatment. Those should go under an extensive medical examination. Your aim is always to detect any gross abnormality. Starting with the general look. Firstly, you should inspect the patient's sclera and conjunctiva of the eyes. The sclera is the white part of the eyeball. The conjunctiva is the pink mucous membrane of the eyelids. Normally, the sclera is white and the conjunctiva is pink. In case of jaundice, the sclera appears yellow in color due to the high levels of bilirubin biopigment. In case of anemia, the conjunctiva appears pale pink. Secondly, you should check for the patient's extremities or fingertips as well as the lips and tongue. In case of cyanosis, they will appear bluish in color due to the low levels of oxygen and the red blood cells. Then you do the dehydration test. You lift the skin between the thumb and the forefinger or on the dorsum of the palm. In case that the skin is pulled up for a few seconds and then it does not turn back to the original state quite quickly, it is called a decrease in the skin turgor, which is a late sign of dehydration. Continuing with the general look. Cardiovascular system. We start by measuring the pulsation. A normal resting heart rate or pulse should range between 60 and 100 beats per minute. You place three fingers over the radial artery of the patient and count the pulse and at the same time recognize its characters. Then you measure the blood pressure. A normal blood pressure level systolic over diastolic is 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury or less. Then you palpate peripheral pulsation. Look at the neck of the patient for a prominent external jugular, jugular nerve pulsation. You would never want to palpate the two sides at the same time because it might cause the patient to lose their consciousness. Then you use a stethoscope and listen to the heart sound. Any abnormal murmurs or whooshing sounds between the lubdubs indicates a serious heart conditions. Then we examine the respiratory system. Starting by the respiratory rate, a normal respiratory rate ranges between 12 to 18 cycles per minute. A cycle is a total of inhalation and exhalation. Then you inspect the expansion on the patient's chest that is equal on both sides. And then you use a stethoscope and recognize any abnormal sounds of breathing, like crackles or wheezing, because it could indicate infection, fluids or asthma. After finishing the medical examination, we move to the examination of the head and neck. Always look beyond the mouth. You should inspect the head and the facial appearance for any deformities like cleft lips or palates, 
facial dysymmetry or disharmony and the need of orthodontic or orthognathic surgeries. Recognize any syndromes, traumatic defects, facial palsy, oral manifestation of any neurological diseases, any obvious skin lesions on the face should be examined for the color, scaling, bleeding, crusting and should be palpating to see if it's fixed or movable and their consistency as well. Also, be careful for any hairless patches on the hairy parts of the face because it might indicate radiotherapy and the area that has been irritated. Moving to the eye examination. Firstly, notice if there is any proptosis or lead retraction and exophthalmos of the eyeball, like in cases of hyperthyroidism. Also, notice ptosis or drooping eyelid or what's called a lazy eye. That could be an indication for a nerve or muscle problem, like Graves' disease. Also examine the sclera and the conjunctiva of the eyes like we've explained earlier in this video. And look at the iris and the pupil of the eye and assess them for any suspected head injury. Neck examination. You start the palpation from beneath a fixed point like the chin, working your way back to the angles of the mandible and then down the cervical chain. Examine the submental, submandibular and deep cervical lymph nodes. And remember, any swellings associated to the thyroid gland will move with the swallowing movement of the patient. Examination of the temporomandibular joint. You should start by palpating the muscles of mastication for any spasm and tenderness. Also, palpate both joints simultaneously for any tenderness and also while the patient opening and closing. Have the patient to open and close several times and move the joints laterally while you feel for any clicking, locking or crepitus. Auscultation using a stethoscope is not usually used anymore. Examine for any deviation of the mandible while the patient open or close. Moving to the third and final point of examination, which is the examination of the mouth. You should always know what's normal to differentiate between it and what's abnormal. This routine should be applied to both routine dental attendees who is symptomless as well as to the new patients attending with pain of unknown origins. To examine the mouth, you should always use a systemic approach, starting by the extraoral examination for any obvious swellings, asymmetry and the patient's color on the skin and lips. Any more detailed examination can be carried out if indicated by the patient's symptoms, like palpating the lymph nodes. Then you move to the intraoral examination. The first thing you notice is the oral hygiene of the patient, and then you can use a validated plaque score. The oral pharynx and tonsils can be easily inspected by using a tongue depressor. Then you carefully inspect the soft tissues. The oral mucosa should be carefully inspected, including all the parts. The tongue from all the sides, dorsum, ventral and lateral sides as well. The floor of the mouth, the lips, the oropharynx and the tonsillar crypts and tonsils, and the hard palate. Also labial and buccal mucosas shouldn't be skipped. Pay great attention to mouth ulcers and ask the patient when did it exactly start because long-lasting mouth ulcers like over three weeks 
can be a sign of malignancy. Lastly, the periodontal condition. This can be assessed rapidly using a periodontal probe. Examine each tooth in turn for caries or present restorations. Check for any evidence of tooth wear and then measure the depth of gingival sulcus and assess the need of a patient for any scaling or root planing. Thank you.